why anyone in this building today should have to hear God saying you're under arrest. Because Jesus died for all. Are you listening to me? Let me cover one more thing. We're almost done. One of the most common things people say is they say, Pastor, I'd like to be forgiven. But I don't, I don't think I could live like a Christian. I don't have Christian desires. As a matter of fact, I had to be asked 14 times to come this morning. I only did it because they bribed me and told me they'd take me out to lunch afterwards. Listen, listen. Christian desires come. Listen, this is important. Christian desires come when you become a Christian. See, God puts within you a new heart. You understand that? Suddenly old desires. Bible says if any person is in Christ, he's a new creation. The new has come, the old has come. Don't put the cart before the horse. First you embrace the newness of life. And then the newness of life will change your life. And how amazing it is to wake up with new desires, to have a new life, and know you're headed for a new eternity. It's the most glorious gift this world will ever, ever have. Do you believe that this morning? If you'd be so kind, would you bow your head and close your eyes in this place? This morning? And I'm asking you to do that because I want you to look into your own heart. This isn't about your neighbor. This isn't about anybody right now but you. And what I, want to, I just want to give this disclaimer before I give this appeal. We didn't bring you here this morning to join our church or because we wanted anything of you except to hear the greatest news in all the world. That Jesus still forgives and that Jesus still offers newness of life. Now nobody knows but you whether your heart is right with God. Now if I had some kind of special radar gun that I could shine on you, I'd see whether Jesus is in your heart or not, but I don't have that gun. Only you and God know. You can pretend, you can act like all is well, but you know in your heart whether you're holding on to your life or whether you're giving, giving Christ their life. And I believe there's three categories of people here this morning. Number one, I believe there's folk here who've surrendered their life to Christ. They're living for Christ. They're not perfect, but their heart is after God. And they're covered. Should an earthquake hit today, they're okay. The blood of Jesus has covered them. Secondly, I believe there's some in this building who at one time, at some point in your life, you opened the door and invited Christ in, but you, you really strayed from that personal relationship with Christ and really perhaps wandered back, maybe even worse than you ever are. And God is calling you back today, saying, return to me, my child. There's forgiveness for you. And thirdly, there may be those in this room who have never ever in their entire life opened the door and invited Christ in. But as you sit here this morning, listen, this is important. It's not my words that are drawing you. It's the God of this universe who's tugging in your heart and reeling you in like He did me that Sunday night of June of 1979. I can't explain it. I can't describe it. Except I know that God was opening my eyes and revealing Himself personally to me. And I knew I had to respond. I couldn't wait another moment. I had to open the door and invite Christ in. And if you're here this morning and you are in need of Christ's forgiveness, you know that if at this moment you'd stand before God, God would have every right to say to you, you're under arrest. But well, you've heard what I've said this morning and the Spirit of God is pricking your heart. And you say, Pastor, I want to respond. I want to give to Christ my life. And I want to receive His life and His forgiveness. If that's you this morning, without hesitation, I want you just to slip up your hand this morning. I want you just to slip up your hand real quick. Come on, don't wait. Today is the day of salvation. Not tomorrow. Not the next day. None of us are promised tomorrow. I've seen seven, eight people raise their hand or their others here this morning. Just put it up and put it back down. Come on, you know that God is drawing you this morning. He's drawing you this morning. Today is the day of salvation. I'm going to ask uh, our deacons, some of our leaders to come down here. If you would prepare just a moment, I'm going to ask those of you who raised their hands and anyone else who'd like to join them. It's important that you act in faith. That, you, that faith is an action, not just a deed. In just a moment, I'm going to ask you to act upon that raised hand. Most of us here in this room at some point, we have done this. We've responded. We've taken a step. Uh, and, and in doing so, you're, you're, you're like what God called the lot. Lead. Get out. I have something better for you. Right now, without any hesitation, if you raised your hand or if you didn't and you want to come forward right now to receive Christ as your Savior, I want you to do without hesitation. Right now, I want you to move. I want you to move. 
And church, I want you to do something this morning. I want you to turn to the person next to you and say, you need to be down there. And if they say yes, I want you to grab them by the hand. And I want you to bring them down. Well, if you raise your hand, I want you to respond right now, real quickly. Come on, I want you to raise your hand. And I want you to turn. If you got someone sitting in your pew you don't know, I want you to just lean over to them. And I want you to say, look, do you want to receive Christ as your Savior? We're not trying to embarrass you this morning. This is the greatest gift the world can ever offer, has ever offered. Well, I know it's hard sometimes, but God is pricking in your heart. Now is the time. Come on, somebody. The question is not do they need to be here. The question is do you need to be here? Just going to wait a few more moments before we pray together. Still not too late, friend. The greatest decision I ever made in my life so that first Sunday of June of 1979 when I said, Lord, all that I am is yours. I surrender. I'm tired of running from you. I'm going to run to you today. I'm going to run to you today, Lord. I'd like everybody in this room to bow their head, your heads with me. And those of you who are at this altar, I want you to listen to me for just a moment. I'm going to lead you in a prayer as if it was me who was praying this prayer because, because some 30 years ago it was me who was receiving Christ as my Savior. And I want you to pray after me right now, just receiving the Lord and, and your Savior. Those of you who are in, in your seats, just out of respect for those who are here, I want you to pray right with me as well. Would you do that? Would you say, Dear Jesus, I know that I've sinned and that I'm guilty, but I believe you died for me, Jesus. You rose again, and that you, and only you, can forgive me and offer to me eternal life. So, right now, Jesus, come in, Lord, take your precious blood and wash me clean. And from this day forward, with your help, I'll serve you. Amen. Those of you who hit the altar, please be patient. Let me give those folks a chance to minister to you. Before you go into I just want to say a prayer over everyone here today. Can we do that? Father, I thank you for the many guests who were here today, Lord. For them coming today to be with us, Lord. I pray, Father, what was presented today, Lord, that they would go home and think about it, Lord. Father, I know many of them, Lord, they, they, they received you as Savior. But Father, for those who are still thinking, Lord, might you prick their heart this week, Father. Might you reveal yourself to them. We love you today, Jesus. And we ask for your goodness, your blessing, as we leave this place today. In Jesus' name. Listen, before you go, if you are here today, you have a special need, you have a physical need, a financial need, you would just like somebody to pray for you. These altars are open. If you wander down this way, myself or someone else will be glad to pray for you, to believe with you. There might be someone here who needs a mighty miracle in their life. We'd be honored to be able to pray with you and believe for you today. So you're welcome to come this way before you go that way. God bless you. Have the greatest of days. Thank you again for joining us on this special day.